Hello everyone. Welcome to part 10 of my line following robot making series. In the previous 9 episodes of this series, I explained how to write code for a line follower robot step by step. Now, I have modified the previous design to make it more easier to use and much more compact compared to the earlier version. I have also made slight modifications to the sensor. In this video, I will show you how to make a fast line follower robot using this new version of the board and explain what changes are required in the program. If you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I designed the PCB using EasyEDA software and then generated the Gerber files for the design. After that, I visited the JLCPCB website and uploaded the Gerber files to place the order. Once I selected all the required specifications, I confirmed and placed the order. After a few days, the PCB was delivered to me. and the build quality was absolutely top-notch. Next, I gathered all the necessary components and carefully soldered them onto the PCB. After assembly, I tested the board using battery power, and everything worked perfectly as expected. You can also purchase this board directly from us. To place an order, simply visit our WhatsApp, Instagram, or Facebook page of Robotech Innovator. Now, let's see why I made this PCB. On the left side, you can see a handmade circuit with messy wiring, which is bulky and unreliable. On the right side, there is a PCB that is clean, compact, and reliable. PCBs are also the best option for beginners because they are easier to understand, debug, and reuse in different projects. Next, let's see what changes have been made in the new version. In this version, I have replaced the TB6612 FNG motor driver with an L298N motor driver along with a heatsink. To reduce the overall length of the PCB, I have shifted the multiplexer to the sensor section. Here is the overall specification of the board. I also made a small modification to the sensor design by changing the position of the last two sensors on both sides of the sensor array. The reason for this change is that a straight sensor arrangement has some limitations, where multiple line positions can produce similar sensor patterns. This limits the robot's ability to uniquely detect every line position, as shown here. However, if the sensor shape is slightly curved, each line position can be uniquely detected, as shown here. Now, let's assemble the back chassis with the motors and attach the sensor part to the carrier board. After that, let's see what changes are needed in the code. I'm now opening the code that was written step by step throughout the entire series. Everything remains the same as before, but we need to make a few slight modifications to the code. First, I am editing the pin numbers according to the new board design. Then, in the PID controller function, I am removing all the turn detection and turn execution parts because these are no longer required. Now, let's understand how turns are executed. When the robot reaches a position where only the leftmost or rightmost sensor detects the line, and all the other sensors are out of the line, it means the robot is about to lose the line. At that moment, the error value becomes maximum, and one motor runs at an extremely high speed in the forward direction, while the other motor runs at a lower speed or even in the backward direction. This difference in motor speed causes the robot to execute the turn. I have conducted a test run on a basic track, and as you can see, the robot runs perfectly on the line. That's all for today's part. Thanks for watching the full video, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials.